Okay, this is Unit 8, Lesson 3, Day 2 homework. This is problem number 5, and I'm taking a look at page 590 in the Course 3 section of the Core Plus Mathematics text. And this problem reads that Sarasota, Florida, like many cities in tropical climates, has a seasonal change in population each year. Suppose that the number of people living in Sarasota at any time of year can be approximated by the function P of T equals 50 plus 25 sine of 0 0.5 T excuse the bell, I'm working at school again today, uh, where P of T is in thousands of people, T is in months after November 1, and T falls between 0 and 12, uh, equivalent to either 0 and 12 as well. So the first thing we're asked to do is to graph the population function for a one-year period in an appropriate window. Start your graph using time at T equals 0 to stand for November 1. Um, so let's think about the appropriate window first. Uh, from our last unit on trigonometry and trigonometric functions or circular motion, this gives us information about amplitude, it gives us information about center line and the frequency or angular speed that exists here too, or period, whichever one you want to get from this 0 0.5. So right away I know that this 50 is the midline. And so if we're talking about people and thousands um, of people, this is, has an average uh, population of 50,000, the 25 is the amplitude of this function. So we know that this will reach a maximum people of 75,000 and a minimum people of 25,000. And this right here, the 0 0.5 t, is referencing the angular speed. Well, in this one, angular is really a radian value. Radian values can take on lots of different things. This is some sort of rate that's dealing with people coming and going um, within the sine function. So we can actually graph this knowing our maximum of 75 and minimum of 25. This tells us how long a period would be. In fact, I could say that the period would be 2 pi over 0 0.5, which would yield 4 pi. Um, so I know that I'm looking at a value of about 4 times 3, a little over 12 for being a full period. That makes sense. Why does that make sense? Well, remember that time is in months, and we have 0 to 12 months. So it makes sense that this is a period that repeats itself over 12 months or one year. So the expression does have a lot of sense to it. Uh, even though it might not represent a circle, it still is definitely periodic motion. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually draw, do a quick sketch here, and then I'll show you how to do it on the Inspire as well. So I'm going to kind of put my midline here as 50. I know I don't want to go over that. This is my time axis here, and the time is in months. And so I want my end time to be at 12 months, and my start time to be at zero months. At six months, I will know I'm halfway there. Okay. I also know that this expression starts off at the 50,000. <clears> it's going to rise to a maximum of 75,000, and it should go down to a low of 25,000. I also know that at six months, I should be back at that midline of 50,000, and at 12 months, I'm back at the midline. I would know halfway between 0 and 6, or three months in, that I would reach a maximum of 75. I would also know that a value of nine months in, I should be at a minimum of 25. Okay, now these are dates after November 1. So this is November 1, three months after November, November, December, January, February. February at the high. So we're thinking about many people coming into Florida in February. Well, us being in Michigan, that does make sense. February was a pretty snowy month for us this year. Uh, so going to Florida would make sense. I could see an influx of, of Michiganders going to Florida. Uh, and then we see here in the ninth month after November, oh, the third month got us to February, so February, then March, April, May. We're talking the May, June months. We're talking uh, the six months is kind of average for May, June, three more months. We're talking July, August, August, September. This is where school starts again, too, so we should see a minimum of population in Florida at that point in time where the travelers, tourists have left the area and gone back. So this is kind of a neat expression to think about. Um, this is being the sign curve. Uh, and it fits. So there's a possible expression. Let's take a look how we can do this in the Inspire now, too. Um, now, I'm going to use radian mode because we're dealing with units that deal with time, and so that will make sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my settings and status to uh, radian mode. Okay, radians is already up, so we're good there. Um, what I'm going to do now is go to the graphing features and check again here, too. I'm going to go to um, actually my menu settings in this one and take a look and make sure that graphing angles and radians, and it is. So I'm going to hit my tab button, and I'm going to pull up my function rule, 50 plus 25 sine of x, or 0.5t um, is what I'm using. 
Now with t doesn't work for this expression because you'll note that the f of x feature has x in it, so we want to use x in the function as well. So that's how that works. I can hit enter and I see nothing. Well, remember we have to use an appropriate window and you saw from my sketch that my window has to go up to 75. So I'm gonna take my window and go to window zoom settings. And what I'll punch in is a time of zero to start and a time of 12 months to end. And my Y minimum will be zero population, zero thousands. My Y max will be 75,000. And I'm gonna hit okay on that. And there's a picture of the curve. Hey, look at that, They're pretty close, aren't they? Okay, I'm, all right, so that films at that value there. So let's go ahead and uh, look at part B of this expression. In part B of this expression, we have um, we, what is the maximum predicted number of people living in Sarasota, and when does that maximum occur? Well, from the equations themselves, I know the midline is 50, 25 is the amplitude. I will know that I reach a maximum of 75. Now, remember, that's in thousands, so 75,000 is the maximum. Then it asks, when does that occur? Well, when does that occur? From my graph, I can read that, and it comes in the third month in. Right? But I think this particular problem wants us to solve that algebraically. So I'd want to say that 75 equals 50 plus 25 sine of 0.5t. So what I'll start off by doing here is subtracting 50, and that yields uh, the 25. 25 equals 25 sine of 0.5t. Divide by 25, 1 equals sine of 0.5t. Let's take the inverse sine of this. Okay, uh, now the inverse sine of this is going to yield um, an expression that looks like this. Inverse sine of 1 equals 0.5t. Inverse sine of 1 we already know is pi over 2, right? Well that equals 0.5t. And we'll divide this by 0.5. Or dividing by half seems multiplying by 2. This is going to become 2 pi over 2 or just pi. So the time equals pi. Okay, well, that kind of makes sense because pi is approximately what number? 3.14, right? And since I was doing an approximation sketch up here and I was approximately 12 in, remembering that 4 pi was actually my full period. So this is not necessarily accurate to the right decimal place, but it's a good sketch. What I do see, though, is that the time is going to take 3.14 months. All right, so remember this is in months. And remember this was in thousands. And that ends uh, question number five from Unit 8, Lesson 3, Day 2.